Hello, welcome to Generation Room 2, uh, a space within the Planeteers World Gathering event for businesses who make the changes. My name is Anna Costa. I am partner at Fashion Catalyst, a platform that aims to connect all the stakeholders of the fashion industry and collaborate towards the um, future, responsible future of the sector. I invite you all to visit our website at fashioncatalyst.org. Um, uh, I will be your host today for a much needed conversation regarding the decarbonization of the fashion industry and how the Portuguese companies are uh, working towards the reduction of its greenhouse gas emissions. We wanted to bring to you a perspective, integrated perspective, with the uh, room for the industry, for brands, and also for the consumer's point of view. And that's why we have invited the companies and the persons who are at the forefront of uh, innovative production and uh, um, research. To represent the industry, we have here with us Jorge Ribeiro, Chief Growth Officer at Valeris Group. To give us the brand's perspective, we have Paulo Louro, Head of Product Development and Sourcing at Deeply Europe. And to share with us the consumer's point of view, we have Livia Pina, Director of Research at The Powerhouse. Thank you all for being here with us today. Um, and without further ado, I will give the floor to them, to our speakers. And Jorge, I will start with you. Uh, will you be so kind to, um, to present yourself and, um, and, uh, and your company's biggest efforts for reducing your greenhouse gas emissions? Hi, Hannah. Hi, all. Thank you. Thank you for, for your invites. Amazing to be here in a panel with, with the Portuguese industry, with Italy, with Livia, and also having your company here. It's, it's an honor to us. Yeah, it's, it's true. We've been working a lot on, on innovation and on sustainability. So uh, just to first to, to introduce so Valerius. Valerius Hub now is a new concept that Valerius Group, a long, long term established brand in Portugal. Like um, we are one of the biggest textile groups in Portugal and we are uh, vertically integrated. So we have our, our own knitting house, our own dyeing house, printing house, etc. And uh, of course our manufacturing power, it's, it's what, it's what defines us define us better and uh, we've been working with uh, with fast fashion brands and also high-end brands and uh, so we are totally 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 vertically integrated and uh, and yeah this this idea of, of having the brands industry and all of the players together to discuss the sustainability it's it's it, it makes makes total sense for us today we are we are working with a lot of brands and we are not only their manufacturers, but we see this relationship as as something more uh, with with a, with a with a longer like extension, like working with them with with many sustainable initiatives and and sustainable initiatives, as as you asked me, that that we are working uh, that we are working more on, and that our are like are the the key piece of the the puzzle right now for us is Valerius 360, which is our recycling unit. As I mentioned, we are vertical integrated. So by having these these new units, we are able to close the loop and having and establish a, a circular business business model. So so yeah, that, that's that's the first note that I that I want to give you. Okay, thank you so much, George. And now Paula, now up to you. Can you please present yourself and also deeply? Okay. My name is Paula, uh, um, and I work as a head of product in Deeply. Uh, Deeply Europe is a surf brand uh, in Portugal. Um, we exist already for 16 years and we have been doing like a, a, a grown uh, brand uh, uh, mission. Uh, we started as a, a own brand of uh, sports zone. We were mainly a product brand and not a brand. And then uh, about four years ago, we decided to be a separate brand and, and start to think what we want to be as a brand. Because we are from, for surfers, from surfers to surfers. I personally am not a surfer, but almost all team is a surfer. <laughs> um, we are deeply connected with, with, with the sea and, and what the, the surf gives 
to, to each one of, uh, of, of us. And all that uh, uh, the surface trans give to us is the calm and the, the balance that they have with the surf. So we started thinking, oh, what should be deeply? And deeply should be inclusive, conscious, and balanced. So being conscious uh, means a lot of things from the product to the way we behave, to, to what the, the concerns we have and how we act as a company. So this translated uh, into product. Uh, I don't know if I want to speak already on the, on yeah, the product. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we uh, can go that after this. Okay. Uh, so uh, this, this is the stage now that now we are really focus on, on, on the conscious part of the deep. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you so much, Paula. Um, Livia, uh, can you present please yourself and the powerhouse? Sure, sure. Uh, I'm Livia, I'm an anthropologist and I'm working here for the powerhouse as director of research and the powerhouse is a research and education agency for the systemic uh, implementation of fashion tech in Europe. Our goal in here is to make fashion tech something in the massive consumption, the medical. Like our main question is why are not, you're not using fashion technology? So one of the things is like trying to answer these, like what is fashion technology? And also a big part of our work is showing that fashion technology could be a very good result or like uh, outcome for the circular system. We can really help to achieve a circular system in Europe through fashion technology. So this is our mission in here and trying to better understand the consumer because uh, uh, we see it as a, of course, there is a demand of this kind of technology, but also we need some kind of education consciousness to achieve what uh, our planet needs. And of course, starting with Europe, that's yes. our main goal. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Livia. Um, George, now back to you. When you were describing um, your, uh, your companies, um, efforts regarding uh, sustainability and all the decarbonization efforts, um, uh, uh, we can only imagine the investment that was necessary in research and development and also in construction to be at the forefront of the global uh, industrial uh, efforts with pro pro projects like uh, Valeris 360. Would you like to share a, a little more details regarding the group's biggest investments, uh, like if you have done some uh, 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 machinery efficiency, if you have done something regarding this, if you have, ch if you have changed some machineries in order to be more efficient and in order to reduce your uh, greenhouse gas emissions, uh, what happens to your process wastage? Uh, what are you doing regarding this? And also if you are investing in renewable energies, um, it would be very interesting to understand effectively what, what this means when we talk about efforts in sustainability and in decarbonization, what this really means and what, uh, what is your group and your entire uh, company and facilities uh, uh, that you are doing here in order to, to reduce your, your uh, GHG's emissions. You mentioned, you mentioned like the, our wastes and yeah, we, we, we all know that the, the fashion industry today is, it has a, like a, it, one, of, one of the most polluting industry of, of the world. And, uh, and we know that by our, by our own processes, by our manufacturing process. And a good example of that, and that we are uh, now working with brands, it's like we have our, when, when, we, when we create a, a, textile, a textile piece of clothing, we, you, you know we have the, the textile the, the textile waste from the textile cutting cutting mm -hmm. machines. So uh, something so so simple as this. So today we are collecting all of the textile waste from our from our machines, which in which in which is around uh, like uh, twenty percent. Imagine of a production of a brand. So we we have this twenty percent, and and we are now collecting for from our from our, our own facilities and taking it to our recycling textile unit to create new arms out of that. So this is, this is a good example. It's amazing to see the textile waste sitting there and waiting and, and, and waiting like in the queue to be, to, to be recycled. And this is, this is a very like practical and, and easy example how we are like cooperating with brands in this sustainability like 
efforts. Of course, we are we we are using uh, green electricity, electricity, and uh, we aim and we aim and we have this this objective for 2030 to to reduce carbon emissions to zero. Okay, how we how we gonna do it? We already we already we are already doing it by by this kind of measures by having this 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 new this new setup of course by I said already renewable energy uh, by investing in new machinery you mentioned that yes we invested heavy on on this on this new unit uh, the latest 360 is an investment of 25 million euros I invite you I invite you all to to visit it's 20 minutes from the from the airport from the Porto Airport and it's I like to call it NASA of the textile industry <laughs> so you are you are all very welcome to, to come you. and it's and it's it, it's really revolutionary and all of the so far we have been working with with some like selected clients on that and the and the impression of of them after after visiting is let's let's start immediately cooperating on this and and, and putting a yeah, project yeah. in place because you don't need you don't, and, and we i'm talking here about like also not only not only big textile groups, but also um, but also some startups, and and we can work with with both. We have that ability, and uh, and yeah. And when I, when I was first mentioned this kind of initiatives, and now we should work as partners with with uh, with. facility 360 facility and is amazing um, and what has inspired you on this path on the sustainability path was was it within uh, within the group itself or did you felt that uh, the client was pushing you to it I think like five five or ten years ago when we when we think about the textile industry back But now we more than a need. We feel that that this is a business and a, a big business of opportunity. The idea of promoting like a, a circular business model, it's it, it's real and we can do it. And it, it was like to that expression of to, to walk the talk and not not only not only say that we're gonna reduce and gonna blah blah blah, but then we're gonna act. And this is the vision also of our of our chairman. That, that this crazy idea of putting this this in progress and is is aligned with with all of with all of our company strategy mm -hmm. too we before and 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 we, we we set up also our fabric development company and this company called rdd textiles is only focused now on on developing sustainable like fabrics for for international clients too and so it, it started. It started maybe with, with RDD and a lot of the focus on sustainability, and, and then we we identify that we have we have this this opportunity, and and we identify much more opportunities nowadays. We have 360, but now we are also also working with uh, with other like technologies. We have here. Uh, can you listen to me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because Anna and Livia, um, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, we we are working also with 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 other projects, not only 360, but connected to that, like LCA life cycle assessment, and in this in this case, we are also working with brands to 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 measure the carbon footpath of of products, and uh, and 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 many more initiatives that that we that we identify as critical and that we are putting in place right now. Yeah, Anna. Sorry, I fell. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, uh, thank you so much for uh, for your um, uh, your input regarding this. And do you feel that brands are responding to to this effort of yours of this big investment that you are performing? Uh, is it having a good response uh, regarding your clients, your biggest clients? Yeah, definitely, definitely. And, and we, we all, of course, we when we talk about our biggest clients, that's an H and M group. To, to put this in place and to to integrate the, this in in their offer, it's a bit more difficult because they they have their own processes and in terms of bureaucracy etc. Mm -hmm. I also I always like to say that bureaucracy is like a parachute holding back innovation, 
and uh, that's why we we also we also are working with some startups and as i mentioned before and that they are like keen on on introducing this to to their market and, and we feel that we, we are feeling this right now that we receive clients we receive clients and they want to be the first launching a pro, uh, a product with the Valerius 360 and they are almost fighting uh, because this is more more than uh, more than uh, more than making an impact in terms of sustainability itself this is also uh, amazing amazing marketing content and uh, to create like a storytelling behind this it's so easy and yeah. uh, and uh, so it's and no it's, greenwashing and it's not greenwashing it's, no, it's it's real it's real it's real so yeah. so everyone is looking for it and we are we are we are in a, in a phase that we feel that by having by by having this and by adding this to our already established like units it's the it's the key piece of, piece of the puzzle as, as i mentioned before yeah yeah, amazing. Congratulations. I would love now to hear the brand's perspective with you, uh, Paula. And um, do you feel that this uh, sustainability pathway that uh, Valerius is performing is creating value and being recognized by brands like yours? Uh, I think that they are the, a key point for the brands to be able to, to, to be more, because the brands alone, and especially small brands, cannot do it so we all together need to 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 to, to go to the same class and and and, and join the the idea and uh, especially in deeply we are only able to to, to do and to offer our uh, wetsuits with a lot of sustainable concerns with, uh, uh, with the glue the, the the dyeing even the kind of neoprene uh, because we have a partnership with a supplier that uh, is extremely concerned with with uh, these this, this ideas of sustainability. The whole factory is with solar panels, so um, and they are the, the leading of the the, the wetsuits to to uh, a way and to a purpose that, that it should be as sustainable as possible. Um, and if we want to do it alone, we will never do it. So, um, especially for small brands, even uh, we have in Deeply, we have two, two kind of products, the, the wetsuits that they are made not in Portugal, because in Portugal we, we don't have this kind of production. And, and also the lifestyle collection, which is a more casual garment. And, uh, and because we are a small brand, sometimes we don't have the quantities to, to be able to do it alone. So. Uh, as many brands want to, to, to have the same response and the same kind of offer, it's, we can grow more because I, 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 if I want uh, an organic fabric, if everyone wants more organic, we have more offer and we can grow more and be more sustainable as a whole. Okay. Uh, it's very interesting. Uh, your evolution, uh, just a while ago, you told us that Deeply has already 16 years yeah. and it started as a, different, uh, as a totally different brand than it is today. And um, it has been uh, amazing to see the evolution regarding sustainability and all your concerns. And I, I would think it would be very interesting uh, if you could share a little, a little of this pathway with us. Um, because um, I would say that all in the research that I do, that uh, um, the, the, the brands that are connected with, uh, um, with sport, are more, uh, the, the clients and the consumers are more aware and, and the, the, their audience is more aware and it, it, uh, it has this uh, amazing ability to choose brands that uh, reflect also their behavior and their concerns. So can you please share a little bit of your evolution regarding sustainability and this pathway, this amazing uh, pathway? From the moment that we decided that we are our own brand with our own spirit, um, this was like obvious concern for us because uh, as we used to say that the sea is our playground so if we don't care for our playground, we, we are not able to do what we like the, mo the, the most, that is surfing. Um, so uh, uh, when, we, we, when we started to have this concern, we, we mainly were focused on product. And now we are growing from about 
one year, two years ago, from all the, the, the points that are um, further the, the product itself. Um, uh, we are deeply concerned, deeply concerned with <laughs> the, 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 the fact that uh, um, the, the wetsuit at the end of life, they are not, uh, they, they are in the, in the landfill, they are not uh, uh, the recyclable, they are not biodegradable, uh, and that for us was, was a concern. We are also, uh, we are, have a lot of partnership, more than 100 with surf schools, that they also asked us if we could help them to, to have a, 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 um, a final uh, solution for the, all the wetsuits that they, 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 they have there and they don't know what to do it, what to do with them. And uh, so when we started to think about it, we, we saw like different uh, ways. The, the first one is to do the best product as possible. And then we really focus on, on doing it with, with quality and also in an in a affordable price. For us, this is a very uh, special and important uh, uh, um, point because if uh, sustainability and sustainable products are so expensive that uh, uh, only a niche of, of persons are able to, to, to buy it, um, the, we are not having a great impact. Uh, so that's what we try to do, a, 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 a good product that uh, lasts long and uh, we also um, have these programs that for next week we are launching for Portugal and, and Spain that we help repair the, the wetsuits for all brands, not only Deeply. We, you can contact Deeply so we can help them repair and uh, last longer all the, the, the wetsuits. We are also um, working on content to have in our blogs to uh, explain to people how to wear, uh, uh, how to dress a wetsuit. It's, it's, uh, it's kind of stupid for something, no, no, someone that don't do surf, but some, <laughs> it's, uh, difficult. It's, it's difficult. <laughs> and sometimes uh, there's problems and tear ups with, with the wetsuits uh, in this stage, how to dry a wetsuit, how to, to wash it and not put it on the, directly on sunlight. All this kind of, of uh, advice is so the, the product lasts longer. And uh, um, now, and also we are making um, like a brainstorm of ideas of what to do with the, 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 the old wetsuits. And we are now partnership also with a, a company that does bottles that uh, it's, it's logic. Uh, it's the name of the brand, and we, mm -hmm. they are doing the, with us the, the cover-ups of the, the bottle made in old neoprene. We, we gave them like 20 wetsuits and for them to make trials and, and, and prototype. We are now on the prototype, uh, prototype stage. And then we, we start uh, thinking, uh, okay, but this is just um, small pieces of the wetsuit. Uh, the, why don't we think a bit bigger? And we start to, to thinking, um, because we don't have the, the, the knowledge itself how to, how to do it, uh, the partnership we to do with this. So we partnered with CVF uh, in Guimarães and also Fibernamics. This is from University of Guimarães. And, um, and, uh, and, and like give them a, shell, a challenge that uh, we want to, to do something with the old wetsuits. And uh, we start to, to thinking of, oh, we cannot do the, the chemical um, re recycling because the neoprene is it's not just one material, it's a, a made up of several materials. Mm -hmm. And so we are doing a, a, a mechanical uh, uh, shredding of the wetsuits and then adding a compost and creating a new material with that. And then we are Develop, we are going to develop like new products from old uh, wetsuits and uh, hopefully in one year we are able to like have a new product of, of, of an old waste because waste is not waste but it's something that yeah. is created. Yeah, it's a new resource. Yes. Um, amazing, amazing. Congratulations on this. Um, on this innovation. And do you feel that your audience is, as, is answering also to this effort of yours? Um, 
in the wetsuits, uh, yes, because the, the price difference uh, with other uh, the competitors is big and, uh, and, uh, and we are growing on, on this. And, but on the lifestyle, the casual uh, garments, uh, the, the, it's very difficult to sell in Portugal and in Spain. Portugal, uh, uh, Italy already sells more than 60% outside of Portugal, but Portugal and Spain are still a, a, a market that is really important for us. And the, the, the consumer is not uh, yet... Uh, educated <laughs> to, to, to understand uh, why a t-shirt that is organic made in Portugal with a echo dyeing and, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and with good prints um, it's so much it's more expensive than a Zara t-shirt that has nothing or a primer t-shirt and so the, the, uh, that's why we are having much more um, conscious and, uh, and openness to our product, uh, especially in casual, in the north of, of Europe, uh, like especially in Germany, uh, because they they are used to, to to quality products. They are used to this standard of, of value and to this cost. And I think that it's a pity for us, that, and that's especially hard for, for for Portuguese brands to grow because our own market is really small. And uh, if you are working, then sustainability and, and good quality is even smaller. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's difficult on, on, this, on this stage. You need to really grow on the awareness. Yeah, and, and that leads us, that lead us, leads us to, to Livia and to, to this consumer's point of view. Um, Livia, uh, sustainability, decarbonization are words that are very tricky, that can mean a lot or uh, absolutely nothing. Um, Brands don't always have a, a transparent approach on these topics and uh, we, we hear a lot and we read a lot about greenwashing. However, um, people are more and more demanding um, and, and uh, especially the new generations. And if they understand the connection between their fashion consumption and climate change, they are more um, um, keen or more uh, available to 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 go for a sustainable brand or to a brand that uh, reflects their um, their um, um, desires or their their way of life uh, does that really show that consumers are willing to have a different approach on how to consume fashion do, 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 does that uh, shows this yes but at, at the beginning I would like to ask uh, which consumers are we talking about because when yeah. when when we talk about this idea, consumers, okay, we know like this last report from McKinsey say that two thirds of the consumers are willing to consume more, more sustainable, but willing to consume is not consuming actually. And we need to better understand our consumer as there are space in their lives to consume sustainably. They, uh, they are, they have the information enough. Like for instance, the, the example of the t-shirt from Paula, it's perfect because do I know that my t-shirt takes that amount of water to be done? I know that it costs two uh, uh, euros. And when I go to Deeply, it will cost me, I don't know, 50. So it's uh, for us in the industry who, oh, yeah, <laughs> for us in the industry, we work on that. We totally know what it takes to do that t-shirt, but mm -hmm. the consumer doesn't know. And also we need to realize that we have different uh, steps in this consumption, awareness, awakeness, or whatever word we can say. So when we're talking about markets, more uh, mature markets, with consumers a little bit more aware of the situation, we have a different kind of consumption. Also, we have a different uh, economic impact on that. In Europe, we have a totally different impact on this kind of consumption because always we have policy making behind it. We have the Paris Agreement, have all these things that we already agreement on doing that and to 2030, then and to 2050. But it's not about the, uh, so that's kind of uh, pushing the consumer to change the behavior. But we don't have the same in Brazil, in the United States, in, in, in some specific places in Asia. So I, I really believe that the going smaller right now, not talking about the whole world, mm -hmm. but as brands and as an industry, we must understand our consumer. Like, what are the real needs? Which are the real needs of my consumer? 
So like, for instance, if uh, there is there's this space in their lives for this kind of things, where they can, could recycle the garments, like it's a huge issue, we all know that. And the end consumer thinks that, okay, if I just throw my t-shirt on that Inditex uh, stores, with receive the, the, the t-shirts, oh, it will be recycled. No, because it's mixed fabric, you can't recycle it. Oh, so I need, I, I should buy only cotton. Maybe, not exactly. We know what it takes to do that cotton t-shirt. So it's a long path of making a consumer much more educated, but in a, in a collaboration and co-creation mode. Not, it's not our, uh, uh, our state to, do, to say to the consumer, you should do this, this, and that. Especially as Europeans, especially being here. Like, we already did the, the, the bad things, we already consume, consumer, uh, consumed a lot, and now it's our turn to say, you are not going to consume. <laughs> it's, it's not our, our, our role to do that for uh, uh, in development countries. But what it can do is, do, it's by example, educating, creating awareness, and so we can do it much better. We can do a, cons a, a, a consumer's point of view in a much uh, more smart way. Yeah. It's almost like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I, I think this, uh, I don't know if this line is from Darwin. I believe it is. Uh, nature doesn't, um, there's not, nothing like uh, jumps in nature. It's evolution. It, and we cannot talk about jumps in evolution. So what, when we look at consumers, we, we have uh, different stages and different uh, stages of evolution in a, in a line, if we could say it a line of, or a trend of consumers. So what is important that, that we, uh, the, the uh, uh, emergency climate, it, 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 it's so urgent that we need to tackle all of these consumers uh, uh, no matter in what stage they are. So, mm -hmm. um, do you feel or what is necessary or is lacking regarding this education? How, to, how can we um, uh, make this message more sympathetic? How do we make this, uh, how do we make this message viral? Uh, in, such, in, su in having this in mind with such different consumers, how can we uh, target them and how can, which is the best way, I don't know if that says that, <laughs> to, to address these different consumers in order to have a different response and, and more awareness. And, and, and be, when we talk about consumption, we also, when our conscious, conscious consumption, we all need to, to understand that maybe in some point we need to um, uh, don't uh, consume as much as we should. Or, or as we want to. And so um, we need to rethink as, as well. How, how do, do we uh, tell this to other people in such different stages? And how do we, to make this message more sympathetic, more, I wouldn't say sexual, but sensual, oh. uh, fun? How, how can we do this, Livia? Approachable, sure. Yeah. Like, uh, I, would like, I really like this idea of having as like, uh, um, for me, it's not a run to evolution, but, also, but a, a, a circular system uh, to development. So we are developing in different stages, of course, because economically and socially speaking, we are in different stages. So again, we, we, we can't take the same measures in Europe than in, 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 in Brazil. So it's very important to be aware of it. And also, the only way uh, to, really, to really approach those people, like different, all those different consumers, it's listening to them, talking with them, and doing this in, in a small scale. And we can do it this as a brand and as, also as, as an industry. Listen to them, take, uh, 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 pay attention to their routines, to under, really understand how to make this more sustainable. Like for instance, saying that, uh, uh, ah, of course we should uh, buy more sustainable clothing and using sustainable fabric, but maybe it's too expensive for some groups. Yeah. And specifically, we were talking about groups that are now starting a consumption uh, uh, cycle, for instance. There are in developing countries there it is at least in the last 20 or 30 years are starting to be in this consumption cycle. And fast fashion helped them to be more, uh, uh, to, to consume more. We know all the implicity of it, but also we know that some of these uh, this, this consumers 
they are they feel themselves more citizens of their countries or they, their, mm -hmm. their nations being consumers. So we were touching very political points in here as well. And being sustainable, doing, dressing is very political. And we are living in a very, in, in a very uh, 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 split world between politics, conservators and, and, and liberals. This is so, so crazy, so weird. And we must pay attention and listen to their consumers because dressing is political. So there are implications. We're going to see after after all the situation went through, and still now we're already seeing uh, some very big difference between uh, the, the world regions. We're going to see a different Europe, we're going to see a different Asia, we're going to see a different America. And of course, this will impact directly how the, the way we consume, and it will become, it will become even more political. Mm -hmm. So one of the things, okay, if uh, we need I agree that we need to run for this social consciousness about uh, sustainability, but we need to speak the same language of those consumers. So I would suggest uh, in, in, in collaboration with brands and, and, and consumers for the brands to really listen to the, what they are consuming and how they are, especially how they are consuming, not just until the end of the sales, but all the using process until, okay, how do I, uh, uh, how do I, I it become waste. I really don't like this world. Uh, but how is it the end of the consumption and helping the consumer in all the cycle? Like Deeply is doing that, helping to recycle the recycle the, the wetsuits. And we can do this in very different levels, but we really need to pay attention to our consumer. Yeah, amazing. And we are running out of time, but uh, um, when we talk about sustainability, decarbonization, we, uh, when we talk about uh, um, uh, uh, objectives for, for the next era, one of the main things is collaboration. So in two words, I don't know if this is possible or not, I would like you all, Livia, Jorge and Paula, to just share an idea of how a collaboration between the industry, the brands, and also the consumers, the audience, how this is feasible, what, this, that, what, what would be um, a concretization of, of something like this. Sure. I can start for for yeah. us. I, I like that idea of turning supplier relationships into like strategic strategic partnerships. So we we want to be perceived like that. So brands, if Deeply wants to start to work with us, it, it cannot see us as a, only as a manufacturer, but it has to see us as a partner, as someone that will work work. On different and, and if we are talking about sustainability on different sustainable initiatives will give you like an added value in that service and consumers will f will 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 feel that and we are we, are, we, we know that we, we feel nowadays it's, it's an interesting idea because we, we feel that uh, more and more brands want to show our facilities and our processes in their own websites want to want to tell that story to the, to their consumers okay and and uh, touching in the in what 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 Livia was was mentioning, and uh, and relation uh, and relating it with with COVID, in COVID and uh, during this 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 pandemic times, we we felt that uh, brands that promote sustainability increase their like their orders to our, to to us and and their and their sales numbers. So uh, if they increase it, that they do it with us. So. Uh, we are we are the we are the perfect ingredient for that. Paula, be aware. <laughs> and Paula, I have to say that uh, George is a surfer, so uh, oh, he, wants, he has I, the I use deeply, and I use deeply from like five years on. Only only buying deeply uh, um, uh, wetsuits, wetsuits. Mm -hmm. So nice. in terms of price, I have to say that. You, you don't have you don't have a competitor in terms of pricing and and, and uh, price and quality and uh, and I, I will I'll be very happy to to think with you how to recycle them too. So cool. Okay. Cool. So cool. This is really interesting. <laughs> yeah, the, this kind of of, of collaborations it, it are essential. We cannot do it alone at all, at all, uh, especially because. Almost all brands don't have the, the technical knowledge. We don't. We 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 are left like a lot of, of uh, commercial brand marketing, and but the technical. Uh, I believe that George that that uh, 
handled with a lot of brands. Mostly all buyers don't have the technical uh, knowledge to, to, to do it. And uh, that's why that's the only way to grow is being really close to, to the industry. And in Portugal, that, that part is easy for, for us because we have a really good uh, industry. So uh, we also can create on, 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 on this with together. Uh, a concern that I have that I think it's going to be like uh, the future is the on-demand orders mm -hmm. that is like really creating a product that cannot even be a sample, but there's like a lot of programs now that can show uh, uh, an image of the product real, real, real. And, and the client ca can give us the idea if it's, the, it's interest or not, and then we produce it afterwards. And being so close with the industry, we, we, because there's a lot of waste on, on, the, on the market. Because we have to produce the, the, like a minimum, so we don't guess what is going to be sold. At the end of, of, of the production, there's a lot of waste. Oh, no, yeah, oh, no. yeah. There, is a, there are a lot of challenges when we talk about sustainability and decarbonization, and that's for sure one of them. Uh, the stocks, the minimum, um, the, the minimum quantities, but we need also to look at the industry side. They need to have yeah. also this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, I would say, uh, quantities in order for them to be as, uh, economically sustainable to, to produce. So um, there's a lot of uh, opportunities. Um, I, I believe that the, the fashion uh, uh, industry in Portugal or the fashion ecosystem uh, in Portugal um, is performing in terms of decarbonization and sustainability like very few countries in the world are performing so um, I'd, I, I would love to um, continue this conversation however our time is up I would love 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 to thank you all it has been amazing it was an amazing talk thank you for your time thank you for being here with us and sharing all your knowledge all your pathway and um, all your input have been amazing and uh, thank you also to the person that are listening. Um, uh, I hope that uh, if you want to, you are free to, to send us some questions and uh, our speakers will be delighted, I would say, <laughs> to yeah. answer to yeah. all of them. Feel free to, to reach out to us also. And um, thank you Planeteers for, uh, for this opportunity and um, see you in a while.